Good morning. I'm just going to go over the test for you like we would do if we were in school after you have it. And you can use your test that you have at home to look and see where you made your mistakes. And if you failed, if you got a grade below a 70, I changed. Usually it's below a 65. I let you take it for a 65. But this time I'm going to offer them now on until we get back to school if and when. But um, when we have the virtual learning, I have changed that to if you got below a 70, then you can retake it for a 70. All right, so let's go through this. Again, what are we doing? We're solving systems of linear equations. What do systems of linear, linear equations mean? Well, it means that there's two or more equations that you're solving at the same time. What are you doing when you're trying to solve systems of linear equations? You're trying to find a point of intersection. Where do these two lines intersect? That's what I could say to you as instructions instead of saying solve. I could say where do these two lines intersect? Okay, and we've learned two ways of finding that out. We can solve by graphing, which means we graph the two lines on the same plane and we find where they intersect. Or we solve by elimination, which means we choose a variable to eliminate, and then we solve for the other variable. Use substitution to solve, to take what we find, plug it back in, and find the, var the value of the other variable. Uh, okay, so the first couple of equations or examples, questions on the test, are solving by graphing. So you're going to have to graph and find the ordered pair of it, where they intersect. For some reason, when I download this, it moves the numbers around. So this first one is just y equals 2 thirds x plus 2. Okay, didn't really put that plus in there too good. All right, so remember when they're solved for y, you have y equals mx plus b. So we can find our slope, which is 2 thirds of this line, and the y-intercept of this line is 2. The second equation right here, our slope is negative 1, and our y-intercept is negative 3. So once we have that information, then we can go and we can graph that, those two lines, on the same plane. If you're drawing your axes and not, if you can't for some reason print out the test and use the graphs that are there, which would be the best option, make sure when you draw your lines, mine are not coming as equally spaced as I would like, but they are as equally spaced out as possible. So the first equation has a y-intercept of 2 and has a slope of 2 thirds. Normally we would go up 2 and over 3, but we can also remember go down 2 and left 3 and draw our line. Our second equation has a y-intercept of negative 3. So go down to negative 3, plot a point. Our slope is negative 1. So we would normally go down 1 and right 1. But we want to find out where this line is going to intersect the red line. So we can go up 1, left 1. And we can keep doing that, up 1, left 1, up 1, left 1, until they intersect. Then there's no question about the answer to the problem. Where do these two lines intersect? These two lines intersect at the point negative 3, comma, 0, right here. Again, remember you can plug it in and check it to make sure it works. So 2 thirds times negative 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. If you put negative 3 in for the x right here, then that's going to become positive 3 minus 3 is 0. So it works. Second example. x plus y equals 1. 
and 2x minus y equals 5. And I'm not really sure why that's happening. So here you're going to have to solve for y first. Some of you are using um, x and y intercepts, which I have no problem with that. Letting y equal 0, solving for x, letting x equal 0, solving for y. You can get those two ordered pairs and plot them and then see where they intercept, the two lines intersect. That's perfectly fine. I just always use y equals mx plus b. So that first one, you have y, x plus y equals 1. So we would subtract x from both sides, and you get y equals negative x plus 1. So our slope is negative 1, and our b is positive 1. Now we have to take that second equation, 2x minus y equals 5. That's an x get that x over on the other side, so subtract 2x from both sides. The thing you have to remember here is that there's a negative sign in front of that y, so that needs to come down. A lot of you on the test stopped here, but this equation is not solved for y. The y has a negative in front of it, so you need to divide everything by negative 1. So that's going to be positive y, a positive 2x, and a negative 5. So now my slope here is 2, and my b, or my y-intercept, is negative 5. So if we're going to graph that, again, we want to try and make our spaces uniform, because that makes for a more accurate answer. Okay, so the first line has a y-intercept of 1, so we go up to 1 and we plot a point. The slope is negative 1, so you go down 1, right 1. Again, you can go down 1, right 1, or where can we go? We can go up 1, left 1. So we want to draw our line as straight. Oh, that is not really as straight as possible, so let me just... Get rid of some of that. Okay. So let's connect those. That's much better. All right. Second line. Second line has a y-intercept of negative 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 would be here. Slope of 2. Up 1, 2, over 1 up 1, 2, over 1. So again, we can see exactly where those two lines intersect. X is, negative two, uh, X is 2, and Y is negative 1. And again, you can check that by plugging it in. 2 plus negative 1, whoops, negative 1 equals 1. That's 1 equals 1, that, right? And the second equation, 2x minus y equals 5, would be 2 times 2 minus a negative 1 equals 5. That's 4 plus 1 equals 5. So that works. So again, where did I get this information here? Right up here. Okay? Take the 2 and the negative 1 and put it in for x and for y. All right, put it in for x and for y, and then solve. All right, next one. I don't know what is happening. The next one, the next two are inequalities inequalities. So the first thing you have to think about when you have inequalities is that you're going to shade. Okay? So again, remember, if it's greater than or greater than or equal to, you're going to shade above. If it's less than or less than or equal to, you're going to shade below. And then you have to determine your line. If it's greater than or less than, it's going to be a dashed line. 
If it's greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So that's what you have to think of once you see that word inequality, or once you see the inequality, ding, 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 I'm not finding an ordered pair, I'm finding a shaded area with lots of ordered pairs that are my solutions. So that first equation has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of negative 4. It's greater than or equal to, so that means you have a solid line and you're going to shade above. The second equation has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of negative 8. It's less than or equal to, so that means you're going to have a solid line, but this time you're going to shade below because it's less than. So now we're going to come over. I'm going to raise this up a little bit. And we're going to draw our graph. And draw some spaces, some lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I know I have a negative eight, so I have to go down to negative eight. All right, now I'm going to plot my first line, which has a y-intercept of negative 4 and a slope of 1. So up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1. Solid line and shade above. Next line, negative 8, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Slope is negative 2. That's down 2 over 1, but or up 2, left 1. Draw a line, which is solid. And then shade below. So you can already see. I mean, you can go down here, but you really shouldn't have to because you can already see that right in this section is where the green and the pink or red lines intersect. So that's where you're going to shade. The green and the red intersect or overlap right in this area. So that's your solution set. All of these points. All, every single one of these points, do, 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 all of these points are solutions. Because remember, this line continues, this line continues. So all of these points that keep going and going are solutions to that system of equations. Next one. Again, I don't know why this is doing this, but y is greater than or equal to negative 2x minus 5. <clears throat> so your slope is negative 2, and your y is negative 5, or your y-intercept, I should say. y is not negative 5. And it's greater than or equal to solid line. Where do we shade? Above. Next line is y is less than or equal to 5. That's a horizontal line that you have to recognize. Remember, it's less than or equal to, so it's solid. And it's less than or equal to, so you shade below it or under it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we're going to graph them. Okay, 
so the first one, B is negative 5, so go down to negative 5 and draw a point. Slope is negative 2, so again we can go down to right 1, or we can go up 2 and left 1. The line is solid. and it's shade above. So we can draw some lines to show us where it's going to be shaded. The next one is y is less than or equal to 5. So you go up to where y is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I put a dot, a point, and you draw your horizontal line. It's a solid line because it's included, and you shade below. Now you can see where those two lines are overlapping. So you're going to shade in that area. So all of these points are the solution set, all of them. Not actually this right here, because that's above the line. So don't do that. Yeah. Okay. The next set of problems are solving linear equations using elimination. When we use elimination, we do just what it tells us to do. We have to eliminate one of the variables. So the easiest problem you're going to have is when you look at the coefficients of either x or y and they're already opposite numbers because if you add two opposite numbers you get zero therefore the variable will be eliminated so if you look at number five five and three are the coefficients of x if i add five and three they do not go to zero however if you look at the coefficients of y you have negative three and three those do equal zero when you add them together so you're going to take and you're going to add these two equations together and get 8x, negative 3y plus 3y is 0, equals negative 16 plus negative 24. Those are two negatives, so you add and keep the sign. Some of you made careless mistakes here and got negative 8 because you subtracted. Divide through by 8, and x equals negative 5. Again, what are we trying to find? Solve by elimination. We're trying to find an ordered pair. Every single answer is an ordered pair, unless you have your two special solutions, no solution, or all real numbers. Otherwise, 95% of the problems you're going to do have a solution of an ordered pair. Well, we have the x, but we need the y. So if we have x is negative 5, then what we do is we go up here and we choose one of those problems. It doesn't matter which equation you choose because the point is going to be on both of them. That's the whole purpose, which point is on both of these lines. So I'm going to pick the bottom one because it's two positives, less apt to make a mistake. So I'm going to put my negative 5 in. So 3 times negative 5 plus 3y equals negative 24. That's negative 15 plus 3y equals negative 24. Add 15 to both sides. Because remember, we want to find y, so we're solving for y. First we solve for x, well, and then we solve for the other variable. So negative 24 plus 15 is negative 9. Divide by 3, and y equals negative 3. So what's my ordered pair? What's my solution set? x was negative 5, and y is negative 3. That's my answer. And again, you can take those two numbers, plug them into these equations up here, and make sure they work. Number six. 
So I'm just going to move this six over here and just kind of cross it out. So you have x minus 4y equals negative 15, and you have negative x plus y equals 6. So again, what do we do? We want one of the variables to be eliminated. So if I look at the variable x and I look at their coefficients, 1 is positive 1, remember, and 1 is negative 1. So if I add those two equations, those x's are going to be eliminated. I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, so negative x minus x is 0. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 3y. Negative 15 plus 6 is negative 9. So now I have negative 3y equals negative 9. Divide by negative 3 because I don't need that 0. I didn't really need to even write it. Okay, so what do I get? I get positive y equals positive 3. Now what do I have to do? Now I have to find my x. I'm just going to go over here and erase this so I have some room and it doesn't get confusing. All right, so I have y equals 3. Now I have the, I'm going to just take that bottom equation, negative x plus y equals 6. So that's negative x plus 3 equals 6. Subtract 3, negative x equals 3. Remember that's a negative, so we have to divide by negative 1, and x equals negative 3. So what's my ordered pair? X is negative 3 and Y is 3. And there's my answer. Number 7. 2X plus 2Y equals 16. I'm just going to copy that down underneath here. 2X plus 2Y equals 16. Okay. So now, if I look at my x's, I have a 2 and a 2. Well, those don't go to 0. If I look at my y's, I have a 2 and a negative 2. Those do go to 0. I'm just going to put this second one underneath here. Maybe it'll be more apparent. 2x minus 2y equals 0. Those are my two equations. Well, my y's are opposites. So I'm going to go ahead and add the two equations. 2 and 2 is 4. 2y minus 2y is 0. 16 and 0 is 16. Divide by 4, and x equals 4. I know x equals 4, so now I have to find y. I'm going to pick that top one, 2x plus 2y equals 16. Now substitute 2 times 4 plus 2y equals 16. 2 times 4 is 8. Now I have to solve for y. So I'm going to subtract that 8 from both sides and get 2y equals 8. Divide by 2. And y equals 4. So what's my ordered pair? 4 comma 4. And again, if you wanted to check that out, you just go to your original problem. So you'd have 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16. And if you substitute it in the second problem, you'd have 2 times 4 is 8, minus 2 times 4 is 8, 8 minus 8 is 0. So that works. Number 8. Now if we look at number 8 and we look at our x's, they do not cancel out. We look at our y's, they do not cancel out. 
So I have to determine which variable I want to eliminate. It does not matter. You can eliminate the x's or the y's. I look to see if two of the if one of the variables already has opposites, meaning one positive number and one negative number. So if you look at number eight, you see that the y's have the y var variable has one positive coefficient and one negative coefficient. So that's the one I'm going to choose to eliminate. So remember I told you an easy way to do it is use the opposite coefficient to multiply by the um, equation. So for example, if I want to get rid of my y's, the first equation has a 2y, the second equation has a negative 3. So I'm going to multiply the negative 3 to my top equation, and I'm going to multiply my bottom equation by the 2, which is the coefficient of the y in the first equation. So just flip the coefficients, flip them, and then they will be eliminated. So again, let's distribute now. So if we distribute, we get negative 9x minus 6y equals, that's a negative 3 times a negative 5 is a positive 15. Now distribute the 2. 8x minus 6y, oh, I already had opposites, so I shouldn't have done a negative 3. I should have done a positive 3. So let's do a positive 3. So that's a positive 9, a positive 6, and a negative 15. See how we can make the careless mistakes, okay? But then if we notice, we can fix them, all right? So keep them, because they're already opposites. I didn't have to multiply by opposite numbers. So 8x minus 6y, and I saw that when I saw that the 6y's were both going to be negative. 2 times 16 is 32. All right, so now I can look and I'll see that my 6y and negative 6y are going to go to 0. So I can add my two equations. 17x equals negative 15 plus 32 is 17. Divide by 17 and x equals 1. Now I know x equals 1. I have to find y. So I'm going to pick that top equation, 3x plus 2y equals negative 5, and substitute 1 in for x. That's 3 plus 2y equals negative 5. Solve for y, so I'm going to have to bring that 3 over by subtracting it. Leaves me with 2y equals negative 8. Divide both sides by 2, and y equals negative 4. So where do these two lines intersect? At 1, negative 4. Number 9. Number 9. All right, so again, elimination means I have to eliminate one of the variables. I look at my x's, they're not opposites and they're not opposite signs. I look at my y's, they're not opposites and they're not opposite signs. So I'm going to just choose to get rid of my x's just because it's the first one I see. The bottom number is 14. So if, they, if I want to eliminate that, the top number would have to be negative 14. 14 and negative 14 would go to 0. So you say to yourself, what can I multiply 7 by? To get negative 14. Well, that would be negative 2. So if I multiply that top equation by negative 2, I get negative 14x plus 6y equals a positive 6. Careful with those negative signs. The bottom equation stays the same. 14x minus 6y equals negative 9. Now when I add, I can see Negative 14x and positive 14x is 0. 6y and negative 6y, oh, 
also 0. And 6 and negative 9 is negative 3. So this is 0 equals negative 3. So now I have no variables. So you should be saying ding, ding, ding. That should mean something. That means it's a special solution. So you have to say, is it all real numbers or is it no solution? So you look at the statement. 0 equals negative 3. When does that happen? Never. 0 never equals negative 3, so there is no solution. That means these two lines are parallel because they don't intersect. So you could check and see their slopes, which would be uh, 7 thirds. Both of them have a slope of 7 thirds, so they're parallel. So to myself, I'm saying, oh, well, Mrs. P just gave me an example where everything canceled out and it was false, so it was no solution. So maybe this one's going to be all real numbers. That was, that's what would be in the back of my head. May not happen, but most likely. So anyways, I'm going to look at my x's. I have 4 and 8. I'm going to look at my y's. I have negative 3 and negative 6. So neither of them are opposites and neither of them are the same. So again, I'm going to say, well, if I want to get rid of my x's, one's 8, one's 4. Well, what does that mean? That means I have to take it again and multiply this top one by negative 2 because then I'm going to get negative 8. So if I get negative 8x plus 6y equals 12, my bottom equation is 8x minus 6y equals negative 12, 0 plus 0 equals 0. Well, when does 0 equal 0? Always. So all real numbers. Or the funny looking R. Or many solutions right and infinitely many solutions some of you like that phrase all of those mean the same thing any number is going to make this work why because it's the same equation okay if i took and i divided 8x minus 6y equals negative 12 and i divided everything by 2 look at what i get 4x minus 3y equals negative 6. well this is the same as this. So that's why I know it's going to be all real numbers because they're the same line. I hope this helped. All right. And if you have any questions, obviously, you know, you can email me. Uh, and again, I'm going to attach the retake to this assignment. I'm just giving you the video to watch. And if you want to retake the test, you may for a grade no higher than 70.